Welcome back, everybody, to In The Loop. So welcome back to In The Loop. My name is Katie Kinlaw, and today we're going to be talking about something worth sharing. Whether you post it, blog it, or tweet it, sharing content is important to engage with your audience. So today we're going to be talking up all best practices for sharing the best types of content on social media. On today's episode, I'm joined by Evelyn Setzer and Emily Copeland from The Smithy Group. This episode is brought to you by Punchmark, the jewelry industry leading website provider. Join the community of nearly 500 other jewelry stores in choosing Punchmark's easy to use e-commerce platform. Go to punchmark.com today for your free demo. This episode is also brought to you by The Smithy Group, a digital growth agency that helps leaders and businesses dream bigger and achieve multi-generational integrity. Through insights and intelligence, digital marketing, and advertising solutions, they help businesses expand their business and grow their revenue. Smithy Group has helped hundreds of businesses surpass their goals and believe that whatever your business, whatever your story, they make it matter to your audience. A special thank you to Podium for also sponsoring this episode. In The Loop is going to be giving away a pair of Apple AirPod Pros, and you can be entered in to win these AirPods by leaving us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, following at The Smithy Group and Punchmark websites on Instagram, and DMing a screenshot of your review to The Smithy Group. You can learn more about this giveaway by going to punchmark.com slash loop dash giveaway, and these reviews really help us grow, so thank you very much in advance. Thanks, everybody. So, hello, my friends. How are we doing today? Hello. Hey, Katie. This is going to be so much fun. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited. We're switching it up a little bit today as me being the host and not our lovely Mike Burpo, kind of um, moving the reins my way as we're going to be talking all about social media and marketing. So I'm excited to jump into the content today. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. Awesome. So again, we're talking about something worth sharing today. So I'd like to mainly talk a little bit about uh, some of your top jewelry accounts that you feel like is doing really well and talking a little bit about what you like so much about it and what do you think is so effective and how they're sharing their content. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to start small if I can jump in first, Emily. So I follow two different private jewelers and Vogue actually put out an article this morning about private jewelers and how having someone whispering in your fiance's ear, helping you like get the perfect ring is, is honestly the way of the future, something that feels more personal. So two accounts I love and I actually know them personally. So Emily Soul Jewelry and Nicole Mira, they're both out of Texas, funnily enough. And what they do is just make every post feel like it was handpicked by them. They were part of the design process. And it's just so dazzling how they share their content. And something that Emily Soul does that I think is really fun just to start us off with some practical tip is that she um, does these stories with her jewelry because she has a few pieces that are ready to buy, not just custom. And she'll hide an emoji in them in a story. So like a frog emoji in like a, a green gemstone, for example, and she'll hide it really, really small. And then it'll be a poll of, you know, which emoji did you find? And sh she'll show like two different green ones. So you end up staring at this jewelry for like 15 to 20 seconds. And if she shares like 10 pieces of jewelry, I find myself like looking at this jewelry for a really long time to make sure I get it right. <laughs> um, but it's just a really fun game where she just basically is showing off new designs in a way that is subtle. And I think it's super fun. So those are my two favorites for now. That's amazing. I haven't necessarily seen something like that, though that is absolutely genius, right? <laughs> Um, I mean, because you're going to be so invested in finding it. So you're going to be staring at it and then kind of like subliminally, I could really use a ring like that or that necklace would look great <laughs> for my exactly. date night or whatever. That's that's fantastic. I haven't necessarily seen that. Um, but what I've seen work well for a few different accounts that I follow, um, some of our clients more specifically, shout out to Bremer Jewelry. They do such a great job. I believe that you guys have worked with them as well in the past. Um, yes, we 
love them. Yeah, they're they're fantastic. Ashley is is wonderful. But in terms of some of the stuff that they do, it's so cool because they're so engaging, especially on their Instagram stories, and they're always showing and doing polls, right? Because you had mentioned polls, like this piece or this piece, um, and even doing like sliders, like how much do you love this versus this? Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of influencers, not just specifically in jewelry, but I've almost done like polls, like aesthetics, right? Like if you were to go on a dream vacation, would you want to go here or here? Um, what what would you wear out on a date? Um, this dress versus this dress. And tailoring it even more specifically to jewelry too, while encompassing some of those other topics, I feel like is another fun way to add more content that's engaging with your audience too. I love that. Yeah. And I'm going to actually take it like in a different direction because there's three different accounts I'm going to give you that I have been following that I love because these three really allow you to see jewelry, and but also to like see the scope of how big and how far and extravagant and fun and wild jewelry can actually be. So like <laughs> Stephanie Gottlieb is one of my favorites because when you go on her account and you look at her jewelry and you watch her and everything that she, that she's showing is really just, just like happiness on an account. Like you just can't look at what she's doing and not smile and dream and like, you know, I always have to like pick my jaw off the floor because it's just so beautiful and fun. Another one, Daniela Villegas is another account where she just has really unique pieces, little animals and creatures and things that she's turned into jewelry. That's just so eye catching, but it also kind of shows you, you know, what jewelry can be. It kind of forces you to look outside of the box of the traditional pieces. And you're like, what on earth? But you're so, you're just like caught up in how beautiful and fun it is. And then Dylan Lex, that is an account that I just discovered recently. Um, She's been around for a while, but the pieces, it's this big gold, like kind of just outlandish in the best way type of jewelry that is beautiful. But for me, when I look at these accounts, I see this like kind of almost out of my league type jewelry. But what you do is that just inspires me. Hey, how can I look at that and take that look and make it my own? I may not have pieces that are big and and chunky or super colorful, but I can take those ideas and really apply them to my own life and find little pieces that mimic that look and that fun, you know, playful side of jewelry. Mm Mm-hmm. I love that. Yes. And I remember you telling me about those accounts and saying you followed them before you even worked in the jewelry industry, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I just find that so interesting. Like what about them caught your eye as, you know, just someone who doesn't necessarily have like a million and 10 pieces of jewelry or not necessarily a collector. Mm-hmm. Like why did you love Stephanie Gottlieb? Oh my goodness. She allowed me to see what jewelry really could be and how fun. she's. She has an eye for just being able to mix and match and put pieces together. But also, you know, she's got bangles that you can personalize and put your kids' names on. I'm a mom of two young kids. So she also has two little ones and, you know, really allows you to see what jewelry can be as a mom, that you can personalize jewelry, but it also can be this really special, beautiful piece that you can wear and show off. So I think it's just this idea that because I'm not one that wear, I don't wear a ton of jewelry, but they show me what jewelry can be in the possibility. And it gets me excited to think about, you know, hey, for this anniversary, I could look at this kind of piece that, you know, is really unique that nobody else is wearing, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I can relate to that, too, because I myself am not someone that typically wears a ton of jewelry like Every once in a while, I'll buy like a statement piece, like larger earrings or hoops. And whenever I put them on, I almost feel like an imposter, right? Like (laughs) this is not normally (laughs) something that I would wear, but um, I feel like specifically kind of bringing it back to the type of content I like to see is actually seeing it on people and seeing it like stylized different ways. Because even though I might be a little self-conscious about how I wear it because I'm not sure what exactly would pair well, if I see see it like stylized a few different ways and I'm actually seeing it on a person I feel like I prefer that content that much more than just like a standard really nice like product shot you know like on a life-size person seeing it you know stylized that's my preference anyway absolutely yeah me too my preference too is kind of like the Pinterest motif of world building I want to feel like 
I'm immersed in something experiential. So I like that too. Like I feel like the, the private jewelers I mentioned, they do a really good job of what you said, Emily. Like how do I fit this jewelry into my life? Then I think there's a bit of escapism that jewelry can offer since it's such an art, which is why I love the account Omi Prevé. I love them. They just have such beautiful fine jewelry and their feet is, you know, checkered out. So everything feels super experiential when you go to their page. I like that too, a bit of that escapism. I'm following you so that... I can see something that entertains me, inspires me, keeps me coming back, but I know I'll never buy a piece. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. <laughs> like, what's the rationale of that? But I think that's what makes it so shareworthy, too, is not just like, how does this fit into my life, but also how does this enhance my life as a piece of art, which is so, which is the best part about jewelry is that it can enhance your life in so many more ways than how you just wear it, but you can also like admire it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, everybody, let's take a moment to hear a quick word from our sponsor, Podium. Our clients know that it doesn't matter how great your website is if people can't find it. Podium helps you get found and chosen by making it easy to get reviews from your happiest customers just by sending a simple review request through text. In fact, with Podium, every step of your customer journey is powered by text messaging, so you can talk to your customers on the channels they prefer. Start the conversation on your website with Podium Web Chat. Set appointments, answer questions, and close deals all in the same thread. When it's time to pay, just send a request over text so your customers can pay in seconds. And now that you've got a happy customer, send them a review invite over text too so you can rise up the local rankings and start the cycle all over again. With all this, plus powerful integrations and features in one consolidated inbox, Podium is your tool for customer communication. Send a text, get more done. Punch more clients will receive 25% off when they sign up for Podium. Learn more at podium.com slash punchmark. Thanks. Back to the show. So welcome back to In The Loop. One thing that I did want to kind of pick both of your brains on um, more specifically is in the actual like aesthetic of the feed too, because I feel like for myself, I'm more drawn to accounts that are a little more like organic feeling for lack of a better word. So it doesn't feel as like planned out, but I've also seen feeds that are done really well where it's, you know, like beautifully laid out. It's very similar, like color scheme. What are your thoughts on being very specific around the aesthetic versus it being a little bit more organic? Yeah, I think I like the aesthetic when it's everything is very structured and very thought out. I think there is a level of trust that's almost built when somebody has an account that's really beautiful and put together and organized in a way that is cohesive and looks really nice um, when you go there. I do think that when it is more organic, there's a different trust because now you're getting to see a little bit more of the, you feel like behind the scenes, this is what they're really all about. So I think both are really good. You just kind of have to pick a direction and go with that and not go back and forth. But I do think you can build trust in both. If it looks really professional, then there's a trust there that, hey, this is, you know, this jewelry is going to be, you know, this. And you have a lot of high expectation for that, like if, as a customer or client or even just somebody watching. But a more organic account also can build a lot of trust, again, where people can see behind the scenes a little bit. They see more of the raw, real, everyday view and perspective of that jewelry or that designer or that retailer. So I think both have a lot of pros to them. Right. I couldn't agree more. I I couldn't decide. I was like, you know what? I follow both. And I've seen both done really well. I've seen the high-end photography showcasing facets of a diamond that blow my mind. And I'm like, I'll keep coming back for that. But then I've seen a mind-blowing engagement ring that's six carats on someone's hand on an iPhone photo in Central Park. And I think that that is just as breathtaking. So it's really just the jewelry that speaks for itself. And like Emily's saying, I think consistency is the key there to make sure that it builds credibility over time. Yeah, I think that that's so interesting to think about too is like the different facets of social media, right? Not only is it showcasing your products and really kind of promoting yourself, but it's also being that like, you know, that market leader, right? Like building that trust and that credibility. I talk a lot about credibility builders when it comes to your website itself and kind of tying that piece in too and how it's so important to have the foundation of the website be 
you know, to make sense, especially in comparison with your social media, because no one wants to see like a beautiful social media feed and then go back to a website where it doesn't have the appropriate inventory. It doesn't have like the right kind of branding or imagery that makes sense. So I think having that comprehensive overview and making sure that they kind of mirror each other is just that much more important, especially from that credibility standpoint too. Absolutely. (laughs) They all need to go together. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right. Um, perfect. I think another thing that I want to kind of pick your brain on too. So we talk about specific types of content that work really well when you share, right? So we talked a little bit about like product photos, like on their own. We talked about how we kind of um, really kind of prefer product shots, but actually on people. So like model shots. What are the types of content that you feel like are, I guess, one, the most engaging for your clients? And then where do you post that content, right? Do you post it in your organic feed? Do you post it in your Instagram stories? Give me a little bit of insight, I think, on those two pieces. Yeah, I think what we've seen that has been really most effective, especially for our clients, has been a lot of the, you know, customer success stories or the engagement, the pictures of their jewelry out in real life and on people. And this is the jewelry that's really beginning and starting a story or, you know, people want to know, well, what did the customer think? You know, what did this spark in their life on the journey? You know, ultimately, I think it's cool to see that, but we take that content and you can share that out easily. And we found that the audience audience will share that out too as a just a special, you know, look into that either that retailer and what they can do and in the services that they provide. But, you know, that's definitely shareable content that's fun. Um, and, you know, we've even brought that back, like somebody would share a story. And then we have one client who um, had posted that story. And then a year later said, Hey, we're looking back from last year on this beautiful engagement, we wanted to show you, um, you know, a year later, uh, you know, this bring this story back. So that was kind of a neat way to be able to showcase that, you know, that story and and really highlighting those personal customer successes ultimately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree. I know it can be tricky. Like, where do we put this in our feed, in our stories, you know, and what I'm saying is things have a longer life if they live on your feed, because then you can, it's longer than 24 hours. I mean, I feel like highlights are really tough to go through sometimes and really go back to them. So if you have you know, five new pieces coming to your store, that can be really engaging content. I would toss that in stories and have people vote on like which one's their favorite or try to guess the specs, guess the four C's, play with styling them and just getting that first appeal into it. But like Emily's saying, I really agree that the the shareable stuff is the stuff that goes in the feed, the stuff that like, you know, you want to be there for a long time and have the longest life. Definitely would post that there. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So in terms of the other pieces that I wanted to touch base on, I think that covers the majority, right? We talked about our favorite accounts. We went through some of the best pieces of engaging content. And I think that that really makes sense when you're looking at the full scope of like the types of content that's most engaging. Think about the types of content that you yourself would want to engage with, right? Um, You don't really just want to look at standard like product photos. You want something that has movement to it, um, something that's going to be more engaging. People want to buy from a business that feels like a person. It doesn't want to buy from something that's just kind of standard, right? You want a personality, tie in your brand, um, make sure that your website is supporting the content that you're sharing. I think if you focus on all of those pieces together, it's just going to set you up for success in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think an important angle here is also the, the captions. Like, so we talked a lot about imagery too, but I like captions that are funny. Right. I like captions that maybe use like a movie quote or ask me what I had for breakfast, like things that might seem completely unrelated to jewelry, but contextualize things. So I just wanted to to toss that note in there. Like what, what kind of captions have you guys been thinking about lately that make you share something or make you want to save the post? I know I save posts that make me think like, oh, I should have this jewelry later in my life. Like, let me let me save this and remember this for later or remember like the exact detail of this ring so I can come back to it. So like you're saying, Katie, it supports that product inventory on the website. You know, if you take that product description from the site and then put it into a caption, chances are I'll save it. Just like treat it like a wish list. interestingly enough. I think that's so interesting. 
Yeah, for sure. In the next episode, we're going to be talking more specifically around like when to post and how often and the more specifics in terms of the logistics side of things. Um, I'm really interested to talk through that more specifically too, in terms of like different hashtags you can use and mm-hmm. kind of best practices around that as well. I think that'll provide a lot of value um, to our listeners as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, Thanks so much for sitting down with me today. And I look forward to chatting with you in the next episode. Thanks, Katie. Thanks. Hey, thanks for listening. Leave us a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. And remember to subscribe. It really helps us grow. Thank you so much. See you next week.